Hello and welcome to Mrs. Ogumethan's IT lesson. Today I'll be teaching you how to create this fun, fun calculator in Scratch. So basically this game will teach you how to build your own calculator. So I built one already for you as a demonstration. So it says enter num1, I'm going to put 20 and I tick and automatically here in my num1 it stored my number and then I'm going to put um, 50 now and when I tick 50 number 2 automatically case to 50 then it asks me to enter an operator so I am going to put oh let's see I'm going to put times and then I'm going to click times and it's giving me the answer of 1000 so today's quick demonstration is how to build this calculator yourself but I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to quickly show you what you need to be doing okay so like I said my name is Mrs Ogumethan and I'm one of the IT teachers here at HGA so today's lesson is about building a calculator and in order to build a calculator in scratch we must know the different operators that must be used and I want to show you as a quick reference that the num the keypad to the right of your um, keyboard is the one you should be using for IT lessons. So the star represents multiplication and the slash represents division and everything else stays the same. So in order to build this calculator we need to understand how a computer program actually works. So how does it work? Well, basically, every computer program must have an input or an output. The input or the output is what we call a variable. And a variable is just information that we store to use later or use while we're running the program or we use it to help build the program. So think of it like a box and you put all your useful toys in and when you're ready to play, you go back to the box bring the box out and take out the specific toy you may want to use. So like I showed you earlier, so we this is a typical counter, num1, num2, operator type and answer. So basically what that is saying is number one, add it to number two and the answer is 50. So with no further ado, I am actually going to give you this to type into your URL, https scratchmit.edu. What I expect you to do is to mute or stop for now. Pause this video while you go and find the computer. If you've already got a login, so just sign in. But if you don't, create a new account. So pause the video. Go to scratch, scratchmit.edu, it will then give you join Scratch, do not use your real name, and then follow the prompts as you go along. Once you've done that, it will give you this screen that I'm showing you, and as you can see, it says Mrs. Fun 2020. So I'm just going to quickly show you all the fun things inside. So here we have the sprite, actually the arrow's going the wrong way, this is the sprite change. This is the stage change. This is the stage, which is the background. That's the sprite. This is the group. And within the group, it has lots of different functionalities. So today's lesson, like I said, we are going to build this calculator. Really easy to do. What I suggest you do is take a screen print of this or take your camera out, take a picture of the code and then we take it from there. So go back into Scratch. So this is the one I built earlier, but if you want to build your own from Scratch, I will show you how to. So this is one I was building just a little while back. So I'm gonna get rid of all of that. And I have built my operators and my um, variables already. And the reason I've done that is because it does take a while to do. So I'm gonna show you how you do it. So you just click on variables and then you click make a variable and then you type in the name and you okay. And once you okay it, whatever you call it, so I'm gonna call Mrs. Ogumethan just for fun. 
<laughs> did you see how I use that Mrs Ogle Method just for fun and I okay it Mrs Mrs and can you see I've got Mrs Mrs Ogle Method fun so go ahead and create four different variables num1 num2 operator type and answer so I'm just going to delete this because we don't need it it was just for reference sake and I'm deleting that so now you can see we have the four that we need so how do we start okay first thing we need to do is I'm going to show you all the environments this is how to choose a sprite so you can go in there it will give you so much choice you can have animals you can have people you can have fantasy you can do darts you get the gist you can also change your background by clicking here and you can have all fantasy music anything you want you can actually i will show you how to upload your own backdrop so if you had a particular one that you wanted or sports you understand i'm just going to leave it plain i don't want it too fancy so and that's how you do that so i'm going to come out so it's plain but if you wanted it to be different that's how you would do it if you wanted your sprite to be located in a different location every time you start you can put the location there and you can see it's x is minus 70 minus 88 you can go to motion and you can actually set you can see mine is set there and i can have it always set there because that's where i want my sprite but if i want it there i now need to go out again and it's set again and i'll take the new set and put it there and it'll always be there for me wherever I want to set so if you want your sprite to start off in a particular aspect of your page take your sprite to wherever you want it to be automatically the glide sheets are there and then as soon as the glide sheet is there you will now find it here in your X and Y axis there you go so how do we start we start these are the motions we start with what we call events so I want it to start when I click so I'm going to put the click there and then we've created all our variable variables so excellent so the first thing we need to do now that we've created our variables is now we've created those variables we now go to um, sensing and we go to ask it's blue the easy way to know how to do a code is just look at the colors and then you will know what block it is so you can see that's the sky blue and that's your sensing so the first thing we want to say is because it's we are it's a calculator so it needs to talk so we're going to write the first thing there by double click and say enter number one and wait then we are going to go to our variables because we've set it already and we go to set the variable to answer whatever is it sets it to whatever the number is so what remember when we talked about the variable whatever number you ask for the answer will now be kept here so we need to um, drop this down and put num1 and then we set it to answer we go back to sensing and we get the answer from sensing so he gets the answer whenever you want to drag and drop and it's embedded in a code always look for the white line around it that means once the white line is around it that is where it's going to go so if i let go now my answer automatically clips in that white line so that's a good um trick to know so can you see now so ask Num enter num1 and wait set num1 so we're going to do it again so we're going to ask the next question is we're going to do enter actually there's a much easier way to do this but i don't want to confuse you but i'll show you if you right click on it you can actually duplicate the block so once i've duplicated i can put it under so now it clicks all i'm going to do is set this to two so double click on that and just set the last part to two like this and then enter num2 like that okay and remember we have already so i'm going to go back here and i'm going to duplicate again it's because i have 10 minutes and it does take a while to do i am just hurrying up so you can see operator you can do it and sorry it's supposed to be enter operator so is it plus minus subtraction enter operator type 
and wait and then we put here down as operator type now we've done that we have asked all whatever the sprite is going to say you can see it. so enter num enter number one num one enter num two num two enter operator type operator type and then the answer whatever answer you have now is going to be stored against this so here now when i enter num one the number will be stored there so we've got that done so the next thing we need to do is to do our statement our if statement if else so basically we're going to take if else and if else and we click it at the bottom so what we need to do now because of time I'm just going to rush through this so you can see but it's really easy to do so the next thing you need to do is find what the first operator type will be so that shape that you need is here the shape you need is there so if it equals to the shape I want so it will give me the right output so the first thing will be a plus and then, because I want it to be a plus, I need to tell the computer to put the operator in there. So I'm going to put operator type in there. So remember, it has to be white. And then I will now put this in there. Click it on. And can you see operator type if it's plus? So if it's plus what? Remember, we need to add our two numbers. Well done. So we go to set. The answer will always be answer and two so now we have to find the operator that has the plus in it you guessed it right this is the plus so what we're going to put in the plus we're going to put num1 and num2 num1 and num2 and now we're going to take this and click it once it's white we'll drop it in and then we drag it and clip it under if Voila, we've done our first one. We've done our first operator type if. But if it's not a plus, no need to worry. We go back to operator again. So this time we want it to be maybe a minus this time. So we want our operator type, it's there. We go to variable and we click on variable type, operator type, we put it in there. Um, it clicks in and then we want it to be a minus this time so we want it to be a minus so what do we have to put in there now i'm going to give you one second to guess how are we going to build this block easy peasy lemon squeezy we need to go to we've done our if and now we're doing our else so in order to do else we have to put another if in else and that's how we build an if statement every time we want to do something new we have to put another one in and we layer it so now we take this put it in and there you go so if this condition is met if it's a plus but if it's not a plus this condition needs to be met and we have to set what it means so we go back to variable we get set and we clip it in and we know we want to set the answer to num1 minus num2 so exactly like we did before we go to operator we now look for the operator that's a minus yes you guessed it right so we go to our variable and we'll put num1 in and num2 in okay and then we drag it to the white can you see how it clips in voila and that's how you do it so the next one we now we can't do else we now need to you've guessed it we have to put another if statement remember all the three has to be an if statement now we put it and this is where it now ends so now we need to go back to operator type just like we did before so we go back to operator we pick the condition that meets the one we want. So this time we want multiplication. So we're going to put multiplication there. Sorry, wrong one. Equals to, we're going to do multiplication. So we're going to get rid of that. We're going to make it a multiplication. And then like we did here, we're going to click operator type. So we're going to click on operator type, put it in. There you go. And now, this voila there you go so we've got operator type plus 
operator type minus now we need to set so we go to set you get it oh you guys know what to do now you don't need me so we set the answer and then we go to the condition which is time so we go to operator we go to times which is there and then we go back to variable and we take our num1 clip it in and our num2 we clip it in and then where do we drag it we drag it to set you got it and now the last one you'd be like miss this is easy peasy lemon squeezy i know i know you could have done this but for those of you who've never done it before we're making it so much easy for you so the last set because we don't need any operators anymore because it's the very last one we set we put the set in else and like we've done before we now put our operator type so we now get the last one which is the last one yes you're right is the is division so we get our division sign and then we take our num1 then our num2 perfect we take our num1 and num2 and clip it there and then lastly we have to let it know it needs to answer so we have to put answer at the bottom we have to put answer at the bottom and then we go to say say is in look and we need to have it say answer so we take say we put it right at the bottom we go to our variable called answer so we go back to variable we get our answer and we drag it in and we have finished whoop, whoop, we have finished and now we have built our program perfect we have finished so now we have num1 num2 it says enter num1 i'm going to make it really easy and a tick hope it works plus can you see num1 has changed to five i'm going to put five again now you look at num1 num2 it should change to five and then i am going to i'm going to move my sprite a bit so you can you can see it and an operator type i'm going to put plus and you see plus and then it says 10 you have built your very first calculator i really do hope you enjoyed the lesson so i will see you in september